Welcome to Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons epic fantasy adventure. My name is Alex and I'll be your host and Dungeon Master. On the Great Isle, it is a time of religious wars, imperial domination, and an ancient evil reborn. Only one crew can save the world from utter destruction. They are... Magrain Silverbeard, Paladin of St. Delegis. Zalara Tremez, Wandering Elven Monk. Magnar Skorgrim, Goliath Sorcerer. Heavenlit, the Fire Kindled Wandering Flamosifer. Alright, so who wants to let us know what happened last episode? So, last episode, let's see, Zalara talked to an old friend of hers, um, and kind of resolved a little bit of that, um, maybe a little bit of bridges were mended, um, maybe not, you know, a little bit of kind of a bittersweet moment. Um, she was asked by her friend if she could bring basically a, a personal heirloom back to her mom and tell her mom that she's alive finally and that, you know, you know, not to worry about her. And also that in return, she would give Zalara a favor with the Sapphire Rose, kind of, maybe? Um, yeah, and, and just kind of all, you know, personal stuff and, and, and that sort of thing. And I don't know how Zalara feels about it, but it seemed a little bit bittersweet. Um, afterwards, we did some introductions between the crew and uh and garen you know and uh everybody kind of got kind of got situated we're kind of trying to get into you know having a new member in the group and, and that sort of stuff not quite knowing how how to deal with them and that sort of stuff you know everybody's a little bit shy and garen had a meeting that we don't know about yeah garen had a meeting with the uh, with dohava um that you the viewer are aware of but none of us are about how garen is to kind of i don't know he's he's to he's to do things out in the west um it sounded real shady um if i'm being honest um but it was it was told to kind of be diplomatic with zolara's people kind of see what ties can be there um and yeah mm -hmm. afterwards we left and we went to uh the the church to buy some healing potions on which uh margraine was approached by the priest to speak to the uh the bishop so that was real cool uh they they had they had a very delightful chat and in which uh, Margraine was not at all um, threatened by the bishop. Uh, just, you know, <laughs> a, a stern counseling on, on how it's it's not good to maybe kill major members of clergy, or, or attempt to at least, and um, and that, you know, basically everything can be be better if he if he does a thing for the church, which is to which is to basically do everything in his power to make sure that the red hands are dealt with, um, using his maybe political sway he might have with the queen in in order to uh, make sure that she accepts the engagement offer of the emperor and uh, to make sure that the church gains a full grasp on not only basically the entire country. So only only a small thing. Um, yeah. Um, and that for that, everything would be be forgiven. And he was then given a wealth's worth of healing potions and sent on his way, um, unknowing to him that all of his friends were kind of listening to him and spying on him the whole time, even though he said he would be okay and he trusts them um and we left off with them leaving and encountering a member of the red hand preaching in the city so yeah of a law more specifically yeah. yeah preaching about the word of a law so all right yeah all right so uh you see this man human man um he's fully bearded he's wearing a ornate red robe with a bright white hands on it the symbol of the red hand as you are all familiar with at this point and yes he has got a crowd around him um you do notice that there are a few red hand soldiers standing around his little uh makeshift dais and by a few i mean there are four and um no oh, we're in the city fighting's illegal mm -hmm. damn it very okay I'm going to use a sorcery point to be able to do careful spe um, subtle spell and I'm going to press a dissertation a just people laughing louder than the guy is <laughs> for this area <laughs> Okay. I, I'll center it on him, just like on, on something attached to him. So if he moves around, it just follows him for an hour. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And people do 
laugh, uh, or it sounds like people are laughing, and he just tries to speak over. Every time he does, it gets louder and louder. You do mm. notice that there are some people in the crowd listening, but there's also some who are jeering and uh, not buying into it. Um, um, so, so how many people <laughs> say are in this crowd? Like, is it a huge crowd or uh, it's size bigger size? Like, uh, 40, 50 people. 40, 50 people. And yep. about how many people look like they're taking him seriously? Maybe like, a quarter. Like a quarter? Mm-hmm. Okay. I will walk up towards the front, not making a big fuss, and I am going to cast calm emotion on people that seem like they're taking him seriously. Okay. Could Margraine also target him, make him feel uh, nothing? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he can still be talking, obviously, but make him, you know, uh, indifferent. Interesting. You know? Okay. I yeah. want to make him feel indifferent. All right. So, uh, the crowd definitely seems to kind of chill out a little bit. And, okay. um, yeah, I mean, he still is going on. You can tell he's kind of bugged by something. Okay. Um, and he keeps trying to raise his voice quite a bit throughout the whole process. But, yeah, it's... Okay. Um, so, so as soon as I see that he, he has some sort of reaction to it, mm-hmm. um, I am going to channel divinity, emissary of peace to get myself a plus five bonus to my persuasion checks. So that's okay. bringing me up to a, a plus um, 11. Is the laughter still happening? Persuasion checks. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, he did not, he, he passed the charisma roll, but he didn't, you know, he still has the laughter affecting okay. him. So um, with 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 him um, at that point, then Margraine's going to move up the crowd towards the front of the crowd, kind of moving his way through, uh, especially being, you know, having some maybe halfling nimbleness. He should be able to get through the crowd rather, <laughs> rather uh, successfully. Right. Um, I mean, dwarven. Yeah, and, and Margaret Dwarfling. is going to then um, literally yell up to him that he's he's a liar. Uh, you're, you're a liar. Lal's dead. Oh, oh yes, my uh, dear young dwarven friend. Yes, I, I know that uh, that is what happened initially. He did die. Everyone knows that. The difference yes. is he was... Um, and, and, and you speak of this second hand? I did not see you there when he died. No, I was not there when he died, but I was there after. You were there after. You were there after he burned men and women at stakes, the poor people of Paragon, the innocent people whom you're preaching to now, same as them, that he burned them and he killed them in cold blood. The people I saw, my friend Blevin, major people of the town, holding people hostage inside the inn, and men, women, children, the bloodshed. That's the man of which you speak. The man who would kill all these innocent people for feeling differently from him. So what are you trying to do with I'm this? trying to kind of talk him down and persuade people around me. I'm, okay. I'm not making this speech necessarily to him, but to, to the right. people. For their effect. When, so go ahead and give right. when, when sorry, go ahead. mentioned uh, When Margaret mentioned people being burned at the stake, I use minor illusion to make an image of it appear above him. Okay. Um, so you want me to make a persuasion roll? Yep. Okay, 24. And uh, Give me a, an advantage because I like the the fire, the minor illusion above. So roll with advantage on the persuasion. Okay, so still 24. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, when that happens, the fire ignites o- over his head as you say that. Um, the people are taken back a little bit and they're like, well, this seems to be the... Like what the the dwarf seems to be saying is is true. Look, Theos is is dictating what's happened, and so yeah, um, you the the crowd starts to disperse, and the man up there says, "No, no, you must understand. Salvation comes through the great Allah. Salvation comes through the great Allah." And uh, the crowd just kind of disperses, and he's standing there, sort of pathetic. I I I see you've you've lost your crowd. Uh, no salvation comes through a law, my good man. Only death. I've seen him die once, and if what you say he th- is true, I will see him die again. But these are lies that he speaks. He speaks only of hatred and confusion. Don't be like him. Don't kill innocents. This oh. isn't a war that you're going to win. And I'm just going to walk away. I'm not even going to listen to his response. Okay. You know, empty courtyard, you know, nobody else there now. Sure. Uh, you yeah. just hear him yell out, Theos bless you. Yeah, but he does. <laughs> <laughs> so Lara will flip him off as she walks away with Margraine. Okay. Since violence is not allowed in the city. Okay. Uh, yep. And Margraine's going to walk back to his friends. Uh, so, oh, we were going to get dinner? Tail soup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe some nice wine. Wine yeah. would be, be good. Uh, maybe get some, some proper ale. 
So is uh, this uh, the big dinner where you're inviting everyone? I would like to invite everyone. Personally, okay. I'd like to invite everybody. But you know, if somebody All wants right. to convince Margaret otherwise. Does no. anyone want to do anything else? <laughs> nope. Okay. Good. good. So you guys, are, and you're going to April O'Shaughnessy's? Uh, yeah. We could go to the other place. Or we could go to the place that has actual dwarven ale. If they have food, right? Yeah, that's uh, the... Solara doesn't care. <laughs> that the fizzy jug? Yeah. Right? Yeah, we'll invite my family to the fizzy jug since we never ended up actually getting to go there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because because now is not the night of when my sister died; it's the day after. So mm-hmm. they, she should be able to go get some beer. She's only at level three for ex- exhaustion now. Yeah, she's had a night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, so we'll all go to the fizzy jug. I'll invite everybody to the fizzy jug. Magnar and and Vadhava, the baby, everybody. <laughs> it might okay. be my Irish upbringing, but babies are okay in pubs. Yeah, yeah. no, it's fine. Might as well. Okay. Um, so you guys go ahead and get everyone together and, um, you know, kind of book out the a big portion of the fizzy jug. I mean, it's still it's still one of the biggest bars there, so you're going to have to um, share the space. But, you know, everybody's there drinking, having a good time. Um, anything anybody wants to say? Anything anyone wants to do at this point? <laughs> Um, Margrain would mill around with his family a little bit, talk to them, you know, try and, um, he would try and up Ildi's spirits a little bit, you know, talk to her, encourage her. She was feeling quite, um, quite confused after her, her death experience, not near death, death experience, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just try and, you know, he just talk to them and and have fun and, and and mill around with, with Magnar and Vodhava and the baby, uh, trying to make everybody feel like a big family. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. That's what he would do. Great. All right. Anyone else? Any other ideas? Habenite, Magnar, Zalara, Garen? Habenite's going to be set more to the side. Still enjoying the revelries a bit, but a bit more o- occupied with his thoughts. Okay. Uh, Zalara's probably doing similarly because she's not really. I don't know. It's been a day. <laughs> yeah. And, um, okay, how, how is Magnar handling this? So Magnar's having fun, but it's he knows it's kind of the end, so um, he'll go to each of the individual party members and just drink with them a bit and just reminisce about all the horrors that they've gone through. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember when you died here and here and here? <laughs> um, At some but, point when Margraine and uh, Magnar... And him and I are talking, he'll slap him on the back and say, Remember, from your diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink my soul indeed. <laughs> and then he throws an axe across the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly the rest of the bar's empty apart from the hog. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so you guys have a good night there. Enjoy your time. And then um, head off to sleep and get ready for your journey the next day. Um, actually, I, I do want to kind of say or as Magnar to uh, Hibonite as he's kind of sitting off by himself. It's like, Hibonite, yes, it, has, it has been a wonderful time being with you. It's It's been a hell of a journey and I'm, I'll miss you a lot. Me as well. But I will look into this crystal tower. I will find out what can if be found you, out. If you could, if, especially if you are staying in the city, I, it's going to be at the back of my mind while we're away. If I find anything that makes it sound even remotely dangerous, I will try and get a word to you. I appreciate it. And I hug him. Um, yeah. And then specifically, he'll also go to Zalara. How are you? I uh, I think I'll be okay. You you have a very good family here with Madhava and, and Ilva. They they do need you. Yes. And I'm, I don't want to lose you, but I understand. This was not an easy decision, but I believe it is the right one. I'm very happy that it turned out that you were not deluded. <laughs> as far as Mulder Caldona made it seem. Uh, believe me, I am happy as well. <laughs> I was quite confused for some time. Yeah, I uh, I didn't know what to think for a while. But I'll miss you. I will and miss Von you Hava as well. Baby. Yes. Well, we will find a way to see each other again. Well, we'll have to come back and see the Queen, I'm sure, once we're done with our mission. That is true. So we'll come check up on you then. So it's not goodbye. See you later. Absolutely. And I'll hug her too. Yay, hugs. <laughs> and then I go to Margraine. Yeah. Just get out of the way. <laughs> okay. Margraine, my not as little friend anymore. <laughs> yeah, those growth spurts, huh? Indeed. I could have sworn you were a halfling when we first met, but I guess I was wrong. 
Well, you know, we, we all grow along the way. You know, you're, you're different from when I first met you. Hopefully uh, for the better. Yes, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have wouldn't have expected when I met, you know, two people along a, a lonely road that I'd be leaving today. You know, I'd, I'd be leaving the city with a, with a new brother, someone um, as close to as any of my brothers here. Neither would I. Yes, but you know, we'll be we'll be back in town, and and it's not goodbye. Obviously, it's just you know, see you later. <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know. But uh, be careful out there. Oh, of course. My magics will not be able to protect you anymore. Yes. Uh, it's going to be be rather interesting me being in the in the thick of it by myself. Yes, but we uh, had wonderful times, didn't we? Yes. Uh, you know, I, I think back on just can't believe it's only been just a few months. But, you know, whenever yes. things got, got rough and I, I looked at my side, you were always right there, right there next to me. And it's going to it's gonna be weird yes, being there will. without you. But it will be weird not fighting everything along the way. Yes. I will have to restrain myself around Fadhava's mother. Uh, uh, you know, as, as, as Theo says, you know, just, you know, make, make peace with everybody. You know, make, make, make enemies your friends. Maybe, maybe she's not that bad if you get to know her. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe. You know, she, she raised what seemed to be two fine daughters, at least Fadhava speaking, so she that can't be all true. that bad. Even though she ran away a lot, but yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But, you know. Hope for the best. Yeah, and and you take care of Ilva, you know. Of uh, course. Sometimes, you know, these cities can be more dangerous than the open road. Very true. Then I pull him in for a hug. Big hug. Big, big, big hug. hug. Yeah. Yeah. Still a hug that takes Margraine off of his feet by yes. a good <laughs> foot and a half, two feet. <laughs> but big hug. Yep. Yeah. All right. So you guys spend the night in the city, and the next day we'll cut to you out on the road. Margraine, Garen, Hibonite, and Zalara on your horses, heading out west. So, and uh, Zalara, you said you don't normally travel by wo- or by the road. How are you guys? How are you guys traveling? <laughs> well, I we saying, always travel by the road. <laughs> I was well, saying by the road. Well, we previously tried to not be on the road coming down from the mountains, right? Uh huh. And then With the spooky, horses. the spooky uh, woods. Yeah. Uh, made us get back on the road. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So, I've, if we've got a general direction we're going, right? Like, like I think the road's the best way, isn't it? Like, wouldn't that be the most traveled path? Are we still looking out for the wyverns and uh, trying not to be exposed? Like, would the road be covered with trees through here? I mean, there's going to be some some trees and things. Uh, it is a fairly wooded countryside. Um, because Ka- Kalendor is towards kind of the south, right? Yeah, it, kind of the... It, yeah, we're kind of centrally middle? located right now. Central, lo- yeah, really centrally yeah. located. And, and we're, we're heading out, well, a lot more southern than we have been previously. We were spending a lot of time up in the north, right? And right, we're heading correct. out west. Yeah. So, like, there's probably a major route out west, and it hasn't been specifically dangerous towards Kalendor. It was, you know, it's going to get more dangerous as we go out, but I would assume the Wyverns haven't followed us the entire like week out here right took us four days to get here we've been there for three days right one would hope but we don't know for sure i mean it would probably take a lot longer to travel not by the road true and i think probably here closer to the city there's probably going to be more hopefully not dangerous to us traffic about yeah because like we're 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 traveling from one of the like the biggest city right in the country to basically yeah. one of the the more major places you know we're traveling out west i'm sure there's a main road out there Kay. so i just don't want to get lost all right you guys make your way out west is there anything you want to talk about that first day mm-hmm. i think so garen have you been out west before perhaps I think I've been west with the caravan, but not in a very long time. Have you ever been to Tuck's Edge? Or wait, no, that's the opposite way, isn't it? No, that's no, that's the same west. Way. It's right. Okay. Tuck's Edge. I do not believe so. Hmm. Okay. Does that mean something to you? Well, it's just that's the as far as the empire goes. I think it's the furthest city outside Kalendor to the west. That still yeah. answers to the queen, anyway. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I cannot be of more help. Zalari, you're from out west, though, right? Well, I know you surely, the city. you surely traveled along this route. I know you've, I know you've banded around many, many cities here in your time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Alex, where in um, relation to Kalendor would um, Termez have been? Termez is way out west. That is near um, Aowir, the city where 
Oh, uh, Duke it's close Nomir. by there. Yeah, it's not too far from there. Um, okay. You know, it's probably a half day's travel from Aowir. So, and Aowir, uh, as actually everyone but Hibonite now would know, is the seat where it's the major city for Duke Normier. So, okay. okay. So, um, yeah. So out west, I, uh, I I know the west really well. I was at uh, Termez. Were you ever to that city, or maybe Aowir? Yes, I've been to Aowir. I uh, I lived in that city for a few years with um, a friend of mine. And Things I am not, not going to go talk well to... with that friend. Well, she died, so no. <laughs> I am sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but th- this will be kind of familiar then to you, somewhat. Yes, I suppose so. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Margaret's to... going to stay pretty quiet. He's thinking about. He's got a lot of stuff to do. Give me a Sam. Give me a D six roll. A D6. Okay. Oh, damn. I need to talk to Margraine, too. Uh, three. Three. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys make it through the first day. No problem. Um, nothing really happened. And then um, one thing you are noticing, though, is on the road, there are travelers obviously heading to Kalimdor. Um mm-hmm. Refugees, people, you know, the, the roads are not empty at this point in time um, at all. But you make it through the first night with no issues or concerns. Um, by the fourth night, you guys travel. It's pretty uneventful. The only thing you will notice is that every once in a while, you look out, you'll see the people walking down the road, or maybe look at some a breeze blowing through the trees, and you'll see that kind of shimmer that you saw first back in the castle up in um, up in the mountain on Falstaff Peak, and then that you noticed again whenever you were in the cathedral there at Kringle Falls. Garen, it's a rather new thing for you. It does look kind of like heat's coming off the ground on, you know, a hot day, but um, it's happening in midair. It's happening all over the place. So, does anybody comment on that, or? Yeah. Well. mm, That's pretty strange. Yeah, no, that's weird, for sure. I would definitely comment on that. It's like back at the castle where we switched Uh. to the tentacle monster area. Yeah. Is it something to do with different planes or dimensions or something? Wasn't there that anchor rune in the doorway of Varhava's room? Yeah, that's yeah. That, that up rune. in the mountain. But if this is happening all where, where we are now, that's like, well, well, the world is in more danger than we possibably thought. Maybe I'm assuming and, and I we would not have I would not have noticed this traveling this road prior. No, no, not at all. This is new. It, it, yeah, it's new. It's very distinct. It's not something you're, you've seen we, before. We had noticed in the mountains. We noticed it in the Kringle cathedral Falls. of Kringle Falls. Oh, when the dude was showing up, where I got my wand, and I'll hold up the wand of detection. The dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, huh. and all this other weird stuff that I haven't looked at for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, so hey. you have seen this before? Yes, we, we, we've seen it before on our travels. Um, it seems to... Okay, I don't have the best uh, understanding of it, but Hibonite, you you correct me if I'm wrong. It, it seems to happen when other other planar stuff is happening around us. Yeah, so like if you switch to like planes and dimensions, this seems to happen at the same time. Like sort of an indicator. Last time we ended up fighting weird tentacle monsters that... Uh, a lot. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And a guy covered in, in cataract-strewn eyeballs for yeah, a head. Uh, and uh, he appeared in and out every now and then. He was uh, really, really nasty. Yeah, I don't know if you know about any of this sort of stuff, Garen. I'm completely unaware of most of these things. But it, it, it was it was why I asked you, a little bit why I've asked you about that plane of travel stuff before. Ah, in the, in library, the library. Yes, yes. Right. No, this is very new for me as well. Oh, okay, okay, cool. I mean, um, it could be happening everywhere, or it could be centered around us a little bit. I'm not sure which one's worse. Hmm. Uh, d- did you Either say... way, not very good outcome for anybody. Did, did you say wand of detection, Zalara? I don't think I said detection, but I have a wand. You have a wand. Did I knew that it was a wand of detection, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yes, I did. <laughs> um, uh, do you want to try using it? Sure. Right? Like, next time we see one of the shimmery things? Sure, Alex. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask. As a wand of magic detection, the wand has three charges. When holding it, you expend one charge as an action to cast the detect magic spell from it. The wand regains 1d3 charge expended daily at dawn. Oh, I thought it was an enemy detection thing. Okay. All right, so let me detect some magic. <laughs> Bibbidi bobbidi boo. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> but what kind of magic? 
It is conjuration magic. I guess that makes the most sense. Uh, it con. con I don't even really know what this means, but it's conjuration magic. <laughs> oh, that's similar to how I disappear, you know, with my misty step. Oh, that thing you do. Yeah, oh, my, my, does that my, mean my, that somebody's yeah, coming? Oh no. I, maybe that thing that's more like a split something. in dimensions or traveling through areas. It it doesn't sound good for it to be happening everywhere or just in a radius around us because I'm not sure what's happening. Perfect. Yes, the planes are merging together. That would be very bad. Ah, oh, okay. it could be tied to Marat Hall stuff. That, like we saw the same similar sort of mm -hmm. effects back mm -hmm. at the um, cathedral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could be tied to their creatures coming in and the demon sort of power stuff from the ancient relics and um, whatever the. That woman's name was. That's really evil and imprisoned my people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anatana. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. <laughs> okay. And all your um, names are super hard. That's right. I was like, I know that lady, but I don't remember her name either. So <laughs> that one. Yeah. Um. So I guess we keep going. Uh, we can't stop it at the minute, so we might as well keep moving. Maybe next time something shows up, we investigate it more. I don't know. I I don't know how to investigate more, but... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm real concerned about this now. Maybe this is just part of the world now. This is just how it's going to be. Just pretty shimmery magic everywhere? Mm. Hopefully it just stays at that and not like massive rips in space and time and creatures climbing out and murdering everyone all over the place. Mm. Yeah. I, well, that I prefer might be more fun. Worse. <laughs> more fun? fun, yes, but at the same time, worse for your average people, not our kind of people. Very, very true. We do need people to work fields and stuff, not just run around doing adventures. And yeah. people to come and watch the caravan. <laughs> yes. We would not want them to and go also hungry. And also, the caravan to exist. <laughs> Maybe for things just to exist as they have been, yeah? Because things are pretty good before all of this, so. Well, were they, though? Ch ch change is always <laughs> happening, Margraine. It's true. It's true. As men's hearts change, so does the world, I'll say right? You're, you're, you, you follow around change. Yeah, changing people for the better. You know? sure change the world for the better as well. Exactly. Positive. Positive change. And how has that worked out for you? Terribly so far. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, I've reforged tons of people. No, no, changing the world, not changing people, Margaret. Oh, okay. We, we, yeah, we, no. We, we haven't done much to help that process. Yeah, yeah, well, downward trend so far. We've changed the world for sure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you considered not, not in the positive way <laughs> trying to help? <laughs> that sounds like giving up, Garen. Um, no, if you uh, make things worse, um, I I did. I, I considered it. Um, I, I've I've received guidance though. I think I think we're on the right path. Um, you know, sometimes things get worse before they get better, right? Sometimes, yes. Yes. Like I like how he's the one to bring it up. You break something, you fix it. That's why I'm kind of tied to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We took a nap. A mountain fell on us. Then something got released. Yeah. yeah like like I we didn't break it per se, but we were we were adjacent to the breaking. You know. Well, we didn't exactly stop it from breaking, and we yeah. could have potentially, or we could have died. That that thing at the door was. Yeah. Like, the entrance to that place was pretty bad. Yeah, and then and then we failed to stop Marat Hall getting out, of course. Well, so I tried. You guys just kind of. Stood around for a bit and not right? commit as much. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, and, and and well, I guess he wouldn't have gotten out if we had never gone down there with that book. But um, ah. but, but oh, he would have gotten out eventually. I, I if we have gotten there. The Somebody out. would have gone down with the book eventually. Yeah, that, that priest was pretty set on making that happen. Yeah, so you know, at least we. Well, it's not our fault. We haven't necessarily helped. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I believe I have joined the right party. <laughs> I really am questioning your judgment now. Can, uh, oh, it's terrible. I've always I... been told that. <laughs> oh, maybe you are in the right party then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we we seem to make terrible judgment calls, you know? So, yeah. Well, with, the, with the right people, I guess. I sensed a chemistry between us. <laughs> yes. Um, by, by the way, um, just because, you know, it seems to pop up around a lot, uh, around us a lot. If someone were to say, try and kill all of us, what do you do per se? <laughs> Um, I would stop that from happening. Uh huh. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I know. But but like I have a, a hammer, as you can see, in a shield, ah, and yes. I, I I reforge people with it. And this man, he casts a lot of fire and flames and stuff. And then she she runs real quick and punches things and then falls down. 
Um, <laughs> so, 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 Thanks, it, 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 it's okay. You get back up every time. I've never seen you not get back up. This and is that's true. the important part. Um, but yeah, so, so what, 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 what do you do? Do you dance and sing, or, or do I have to worry about you dying around me all the time, like Zalara? Or as I have never died exactly, uh, uh, I don't think you have to worry about that. Better track record than us, then. Um, yes. So it seems <laughs> it's um, almost an entry requirement to the group, really, to become a fully full, full fledged member. You have to kind of die a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like I, I see you I don't carry us on that. <laughs> But yeah, you. like, I see you don't carry a sword or a bow or anything like that. I carry this whip, and he moves his cloak to the side. Okay. And you see, like, a, like a row of daggers and oh. a bunch of smaller weapons and stuff, um, like sling. Um, and then, and but I love my whip, but it is not my forte exactly. Okay. I, I cast magic as well. I do not do fire. Okay. Uh, I don't a whole as heart. nearly as often people say I do. <laughs> Well, you look like fire, so it yeah. works out. People I mean, just that's, associate that's, that. That's, that's, it's that's, kind of your uh, thing, even red, though you don't. Mean I'm fire. Yeah. No, it's definitely your thing, Hibonite. Like, but you, you just don't <laughs> I do it all the time. Enjoy the fire. Don't get me wrong, but you guys don't like me burning things, and people get scared, and there's damage. <laughs> True. Yes, uh, but I, I do magic. Okay. All okay. sorts. Okay. I, I just needed to know for, for, for the purposes of when somebody tries to kill us, because it's not an if question, it's just a when. Um, oh, or something. Yeah. Sometimes it's just it's, animals and creatures. It, it's, a, it's a thing sometimes, yeah. Or like a force of some sort, or, you know, old gods. That's a thing. Yeah. So, ah, yes. They're kind of gods a pain to take down. Again. But I can handle my own. I will generally stay in the back as much as possible. Because I do not want to die, but I can I can get up close as well. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to say? I will try to talk quietly to Margraine. Um, can we set it up so like Garen and Hibonite are off somewhere else, maybe talking? We can fall so, back a little so Garen, bit. Garen, what spells yeah. do you do? <laughs> okay, so kind of quietly then to Margraine, I'm gonna be like, so you were wondering about uh uh my friend. Uh huh. Um, so she uh is not who. Well, she is who she says he is, but um, did did I ever tell you about Tamika? Yeah, uh, she traveled with my mom for a while, right? Yeah, so she's Tamika, um, uh-huh. and Tamika and I, um, when we were in AOR together, we worked... Wait, wait, uh, so she's Tamika? But didn't yeah. Tamika die? Yeah. Okay. We worked together as a, uh, well, at the time... I thought it was just a, a crew to help. Like, there's lots of orphans, and um, we were trying to feed them because there weren't nearly enough you know, people helping them, so they were just dying on the streets. And so we would steal from the rich, um, and I would... I started out, I didn't know quite what I was doing, and I was just making jewelry for her because my dad taught me, and apparently, even though I suck at it uh, in my hometown, like, they thought it was really good. So I made jewelry out of the stuff that they would steal and then we'd sell it and we would make you know enough to feed the kids and that that was kind of what we were doing well it turns out um one of the raids we were going to do all together uh was actually at delcro uh we were all invited to a party there and um she told them okay and apparently arranged to to die uh or so i thought arranged to look dead okay and, and uh i uh took her ashes home and they don't look kindly on stealing in my, my hometown. It's really a crime against everybody when you, you try to do that because everything's for everyone, you know? We just share. Okay. And, and uh, I'm not supposed to go home. I'm, I'm kind of banished. Oh. Because of what Tamika did. Okay. And what we did. Well. So she's back from the dead. And now she uh, apparently runs the, uh, the, the Sapphire Rose. Wait, what? Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know a lot about the Sapphire Rose, right? But doesn't that have something to do with with the guy who helped Magnar and Hibonite out of jail? Well, you and then you saw him with her. Y- yes, yes, him. And mm-hmm. then the, the there was a Sapphire Rose on uh, on the the letter I received from Madame Granite with the dead bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. So so we didn't get a chance to talk to her, but I can send her a message. Uh huh. Um. Basically, she said she's willing to do something as a favor for us. Okay. I didn't know what to ask for. Okay. 
But I don't know what we'd want from her. She's a bad person, right? Well... Like if Madame Granite's associated with her, she she killed my sister. I know she's alive now, but you know, she she sent assassins to kill, so obviously obviously they work for the Sapphire Rose, who is I guess your friend or you're you're from before. You know, I, I, I know she was friends with my mother when they traveled and stuff, but Yeah. What would what would we want from a person like her? I that was just it. I didn't know what to ask huh. for. Um, I see. So she's not dead anymore. Not dead. Okay. Well, that seems to be a state that lots of people are in right now. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. We're not dead. Elal's apparently not dead. Your your old friend's not dead. <sighs> um. Yeah. Kind of rough. So uh, I I don't. I just y- you seemed really confused, and I just wanted to let you know. Yeah. Yeah. I I did because I didn't know how you would know her. You know, and uh, we met her at a, a party once. Um. But oh. nothing more than that. And, and yeah, it just seemed like there was was stuff going on. That's an understatement. Yeah, you know. Um, but I, I'm I'm thank thanks that you told me. You know, um, it's good. We shouldn't keep, keep secrets from each other. Yeah. yeah. Um. But maybe if she's the head of the Sapphire Rose, she could do something about granite for us. Maybe that's a that's a actually a rather had, good idea. I hadn't thought of it till just now. Right, because she tried to call in a favor with Magnar still. Yeah. And she'll be calling on you and Hibonite eventually. Yeah. That's actually, you know, maybe we can wipe our hands of that whole mess. Or, oh god. Yeah. Um, or maybe that was her idea in the first place, Solara. You know, well, like, you know, we got out of jail in, in Durnholm, and one of the few people that could help us out was one of her minions. Um, I don't know. Sounds suspicious you, to me. You think that she got you guys out of jail in order to Have use you? leverage? I don't know. It's it's just a thing that just literally came across my mind right now when I was thinking about it. I, right? True. Because I don't know if I can trust her. Her her henchmen killed those people in the in the in the jail, letting mm-hmm. Hibonite and Magnar out, making the situation a whole lot worse. You know, we didn't have, like, a a legal way out of it at that point. And then in order to fix that situation that was caused, somebody from the Sapphire Rose was pivotal in convincing the the Durnholm Assembly that we would would be able to Mm. be free. She probably would have known that, too. Well, if she... Maybe if she didn't know that directly, you know, Madame Granite did at least, right? Well, but did she know that I was with you? She thought I was dead. That's... I went and I don't hid know. in a monastery for decades. Yeah? I don't know. Sorry. It was It was just... Forget about it. It was just a thing that came across my mind. Uh, you know. Yeah. I just don't know who to trust beyond you and Hibonite. I don't even know about Garen yet. Uh, he seems like a fond enough fellow, but, you know, um... I don't know what to think of it, you know? He, he's been given to us by the queen, you know, it's... I you make trust him sound like earned. property. No, but, like, assigned? Assigned, right? Like, That's I don't know. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, people are, 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 are assigned to people all the time. You know, I, I was a paladin, you know, I I was assigned to people to, to escort them and stuff, so... Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, it, thank you for telling me, though. I'll have to think about it. It's, uh... A lot of a lot of webs being there's a lot of games going on. I don't, I don't like it. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> um. It seems everybody has a hidden agenda, and that nobody, every everybody wants to be your friend for what they can get out of you. And yeah, it, I find it concerning. I I don't know. Things are huh? things are so much easier when there's a there's an enemy in front of you that you can just kind of hit punch. Yeah. I agree. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. We should probably catch back up to the group. Yeah, yeah, we'll catch up with the other two. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll think about it. And thank you for telling me. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. So, did you love birds heavy nice chat? <laughs> uh, 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 no, no. Um, we're, Have we're you been not... talking to his mom? Uh, I heard things. No, we're 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 not we're not together, uh, Garen. Uh, <laughs> regardless of what my mother may think. I, I'm going to message Garen. They're still in denial. <laughs> I'll wink at Hibonite. Ah, oh, crap. Uh. <laughs> Our teammates are shipping us now. Damn it. <laughs> All right, so you guys travel. Um, I'll say that's the second day you guys were speaking. You, uh, you make it through the third. And um, once again, no issues. You notice that the 
forest is thinning out a bit. It's starting to look a little bit more like rolling hills, um, kind of plains. Like the the hills are, are, I guess, rolling, but not huge. Um, It's more of a grassland sort of area with some trees still up there. On the third night, Margraine, Lenore comes to you and says, Oh, my dear dwarf, you're not living up to the expectations that we have. You're breaking our agreement. You haven't reforged anyone lately. It's 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 hard. There's nothing there's nothing here. There are so many people you've passed in need of reforging. What do you mean? Well, they're just travelers. They're they're good people. I, you don't know that. I don't not know that. <laughs> Listen, my love. You need to make sure you're reforging someone by tomorrow evening, or you might find that you're losing me. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Is this all in his head? Yeah. Okay. So, the fourth day comes. You're pretty much out of the uh, forest completely. It is more of a grassland. You guys know, um, well, especially Zalara and Garen uh, would know that this is more the landscape you're going to find in um, the dukedom of Nomir. So, you're figuring you're getting close to that area. As you are traveling... What's um? What's everybody's passive perception? Twelve. Oh, mine's amazing, as we all know. Um, <laughs> fifteen. Six. No. Um. Okay, I think mine's fifteen as well. Uh, seventeen. I take that back. Mine's seventeen. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Well, um, as you guys are traveling, you all hear a sound which is familiar. Uh, you hear the screech of well, with the exception of Garen. I forgot you weren't there. Um, everyone else notices the sound of a wyvern. Garen, you hear the screech of an animal, the likes of which you've never heard before. Um, as you look forward where it's coming from, you see on the road ahead of you, you can see it's in the, the sky. You also see some of the lightning flash shooting down that Hibonite, of course, you know is similar to your wand and uh, was carried by a scribe earlier. You, as you look forward on the ground, you see there's a group of people. It looks like it's attacking, though they're small and just kind of a dark mass at this point. It's just one wyvern, mm-hmm. and and you can see that over like what the past day or so, Margaret's been kind of tense. And contrary to maybe the situation we're going into, he seems to relax a little bit. Like there's a weight off of his back. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and I was wondering when this party would become fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh. if, if you're looking for combat, we, it just finds us everywhere normally. As soon as we leave a city, it, sometimes in I'm, cities it still finds us. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm a little it surprised it took one. this long. To be perfectly honest, yeah, I'm surprised Margarine hasn't charged off already. To be honest, I I wouldn't just. Uh, yeah. Can we can we do something about this? <laughs> <laughs> How far right. are they? Um, they are. I mean, they're they're fairly far. It's going to take you at least a, a two turns to get there at a at a full gallop. Okay. Um, and what does it look like from where we are? You said there's a wyvern. It looks like there's fighting yeah, there's going wyvern. on between people, or just they're fighting a wyvern. You see, the uh, really the only thing they're far far a little far enough away that the only thing you can really see is the wyvern flying above somebody. You know, it, it's kind of swooping down. You see the lightning shoot out. There's a group of people that it seems to be attacking. Okay. Um, you see a couple arrows fly. Up, you see the Wyvern jab its stinger into somebody and then drop them onto the ground, uh, but you can't really tell much more than that. Okay, okay. well, uh, this seems like a. I, I know we want to deliberate and talk about this, but this seems urgent. That Wyvern is killing people. We should take yeah, care of go. it, like, right right away. Okay, okay. Yep. Go. Let's yeah. go. Urgent. Lead the way. Yeah, and Margarine will charge off. Fast A horse movement's like 60 feet, isn't it? 60 feet, yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So All it right. takes us. You said two gallops? Yeah. Yeah. So then Mark Green off for another successful cavalry charge because the last one went so well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay. So you guys charge up. As you get closer, you see that this group that's down on the ground, it looks like a group of uh, some kind of refugees. There, You see some traveling wagons with them. Um, you see that there are soldiers um, standing around them. Garen and, and uh, Zlara, you would recognize them wearing the colors of Normia. Um, and they seem to be fighting this dragon as much as they can. You do see bodies lying, or dragon the wyvern, 
um, as much as they can. You do see bodies lying around. You only see three of the soldiers still standing who are wearing that armor. You see about five dead around them. Um, the people are all screaming in terror, huddling up, trying to, you, know, you see uh, parents trying to cover up their children and, and um, husbands their wives and wives their husbands and so forth as it is attacking. Um, what do you guys do? Or actually, give me an initial roll. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh, I need to track this thing. Uh, oh, shoot. That's 19. Four. 21. Shoot. Five with a crit fail. <laughs> Starting off great. Okay, cool. Uh, Garen, you can go first between the two. Oh, okay. Okay. I have an 18 dex, so. Yeah. You would, and you roll a five? I got a one. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> okay, so, Hibonite, you're first up, buddy. Uh, what are you doing from the back of your horse, which we're going to reference? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I be a hundred feet away and use my staff of lightning bolts? Seven charges. How is it? One charge for a third level. So I'm gonna do it at uh, I'm gonna do level eight. Light impulse. Ooh, thirteen d six worth of damage. Oh wow. Okay. So that's forty seven lightning damage. Oh, oh yeah. and half on a D- fail. And it's DC what? Uh, that'd be my DC one. So fifteen. Okay. Do do. do let's see. Open with a bang. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Um, and you said 47. 47, yep. All right, so, and it would hit them both with the lightning Yeah, because they would be yep. within five feet, so it would be a line along them. Yep. Okay, so, um, from the back of your horse, you focus your wand on them. Uh, lightning shoots out, and they both scream in pain. You see the electrical charge jolt through both their bodies. They are clearly hurt and smoking, but still up. It is your turn. Or wait, are you doing anything else, uh, Hibonite? Uh, that's just my that's my action, so I won't be doing anything else. I'll just stay about 100 feet away. Okay, your turn, Margarine. Okay, can I get within 90 feet of the Wolverine or Rider? Yes. Okay. Um, so, for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Hex on them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I will cast it on the Rider. Okay. Yeah, not the the, the guy. Remind me and, how Hex works. Is it just uh, automatic damage? Or? So, so I cast it on him. I get to do extra damage when I hit it with something. Okay. And then it has disadvantage on on ability checks made with a chosen ability. So I'm going to make that, uh, what's a good one? I'll make it dex, because that helps uh, Hibonite's stuff, because he does a lot okay. of AOE stuff. Um, so it will have disadvantage on dex stuff. Yes. And then, since I'm within range to cast that, I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast Ooh. at, at him okay. in the sky. So does a 20 hit him? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's for 10 force damage from that, and then he takes hex damage. So four necrotic damage from that. So yeah, and I'm gonna get up as close as possible, and that's gonna be my turn. Okay, so um, you cast that spell out, you see force go flying out of your hand, hits him, he yells out in pain again, and you ride up right under the hovering wyvern. Your turn, Zalara. Okay, so I'm riding up. Um, am I like within short bow distance? Yep. I believe it's six. Okay, so I'm just going to level my short bow at it for a twenty-five. Oh, nice! At which which one? Uh, the rider. At or the, the rider. Okay. And that's um, thirteen altogether okay. for damage, and then an uh, extra attack for 23 for six piercing and then I'm going to spend a key point to take patient defense so what Which? does it look like when you kill the rider oh uh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> cock blocking Margarine again uh I I shoot it through the eye socket. All right. The scribe screams in pain as the arrow pierces through its eye, shooting uh, right out the back, and it falls back, its legs catching in the stirrup, so its body is ho- uh, held onto the saddle of the wyvern. It is now the wyvern's turn, and it is... Does not know that its rider's dead yet, and it is going to bite down at Margraine and wildly miss. Okay. And it ends up hitting the ground as it tries to bite you. (laughs) Pushes itself back up to a hovering motion, obviously a little bit hurt, and that'll be its turn. So now it is your turn, Garen. 
All right. So, are there other uh, like what what is fighting currently? Right now, it's you guys. You see three soldiers, uh, Duke Nomir's soldiers, who are standing there. Uh, they've got bows ready. They're they're ready to fight the Wavern, the Worm Wavern, and the Scribe. Okay, but it was it was just them. Yep. Okay. All right. Then I will shoot Mel's acid arrow. Ooh, a classic. Ooh, sixteen. Let's see. To I hit. believe that does hit it. Yeah, it does. All right, so that is 10 acid damage right now. Okay. And then it will take four acid damage at the end of its next turn. Okay. Is there a save for that? Um, I think it's an actual, like, attack, so no. Okay. Cool. Well, crud. Um, well, Garen, I ended up erasing you. Hold on. <laughs> well, you go last. We know that. All right, cool. Um, uh, Hibonite, your turn. Um, I'm gonna... Fireball the Wyvern. Okay. Because I should be staying back as I am. I'm doing the right thing for one. <laughs> so that's a DC 15 or 33 fire damage. I assume you're hitting that in a place just where you're not like hitting. Just above it. <laughs> yeah. Not hitting anyone else. Just like okay. above. Okay. So, what does it look like when the fireball kills the Wyvern? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the force of it just like pushes it to the floor. It's just, like lays around Margarine. Like, the next is curled around him. <laughs> 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 the rider and the, the beast are just like at Margarine's feet, sort of thing. They're just the perfect sort of blast pushing it down into the position. <laughs> okay. So uh, you push it down to that position, and the um, in your head, Margarine, you hear Lenore saying, Oh, my love, you failed me. You failed me so much. You must get this done before this evening, and we'll call the episode there. <laughs> Thanks for listening to episode 51 of Beholder's Eye, The End and Beginning. I hope you all are as jazzed as I am about the new storyline as the characters head out west to defeat Marat Hall. I'm, I'm really excited to see... Where this goes, and with the changeup of cast, it should be a lot of fun. If you enjoy what we do, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or whatever podcast app you use. It helps us out immensely, and if you leave a five-star review, we will read it on the air. Speaking of which, we do have a review from AEDG Hive Queen. Amazing show. A truly fun group of people with well-thought-out characters and storylines. Often feels like you're sitting at the table with them. Highly recommend giving them a listen definitely worth your time thanks a lot aedg hive queen be sure to check us out on twitter at beholders ipod and our website beholders icast.com you can follow ryan who plays hibonite at duff duff the third ben who plays garen and magnar for one last time at mural 4d2 kim who plays zalara at Mets girl and sam who plays margraine at samsalon 007 thanks and we'll see you next week Editing performed by Sam Kinnear. Music from filmmusic.io. Curse of the Scarab, Our Story Begins, Lore of the Land, The Escalation, Crossing the Chasm, Immersed, Long Road Ahead, Vassal, The Descent, and Unseen Horror by Kevin McLeod. Incompetech.com. License under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 Licenses. CreativeCommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash buy forward slash 4.0 forward slash. All sound effects by Zapsplat.com.